By now you've seen the effects of the electrostatic force, whether through demonstrations in class or by rubbing a balloon on your head and holding it close to your arm hair. In this video, you'll learn how to take data and analyze it to find the relationship between the strength of the electrostatic force and the distance between two charged objects. So to begin, you're going to open Logger Pro like I have here, and you're going to insert a movie. Now the movie uh, movie's already been recorded, so when you go to insert movie, you're going to go to the extras drive, and um, in here go to science, go to physics, and then go to uh, physics 432. Here you can find the videos on your electrostatic force lab. There are three. You're going to be assigned 29, 30, or 31. So I'm going to insert 29, for instance, and you get a video that looks like this. The first thing you need to do is just resize this so that it fits on the screen, something like that. Now you're going to go down to the lower right corner and you're going to click on this button. It's called the Enable or Disable Video Analysis button. Then we need to figure out where the balloon is hanging. Now, just so you can see this video one time, this is what it's going to look like. There's one balloon that I carry in, and they're both charged, so they repel each other. And that's the video. Can I try that one again? We're going to analyze the first part of that video. So the first thing you need to do is you need to figure out where the balloon is at rest. You can move back and forth using these buttons. This just moves one frame at a time. And you can see the frames up here are moving as I click back and forth. So I'm going to say that right here this balloon is at rest. And I need to set the origin on that balloon. Now you can set the origin wherever you want. You go up to the set origin button, that's this one. And you can set it here. You can set it on this little doodad at the top. Um, for this, I'm just going to set it. Oh, I'll go right in the middle, right below that little guy. So it looks like that. Next thing we want to do is set the scale so that the computer knows what kind of real distances we were working with. So you go over to the set the scale button. And in the background of the video, you can see there's a meter stick. And I'm just going to click and drag along there and I'm going to set that distance as one meter. It's already included, so that's one meter long. Now I'm ready to actually mark the location of the balloon for each individual case. So I'm going to go to uh, the Add Point button, which is this one, and I'm just going to add a point for the hanging balloon. So the balloon starts off hanging right here. I'm going to click that. Now notice when I did that, the frame was 206. So it might be different on your movie. On mine it's 206. I'm going to fast forward here about 20 frames. It wouldn't have to be 20, it could be 30, it can be 15, it doesn't matter. And then I'm going to mark the location of the balloon again, and I'm going to go right below that little thing again, and the balloon has moved about that far. Then I'm going to fast forward again 20 frames. So I'm going to go up to 246. And I'm going to mark the location again. You're going to continue to do this. So go forward again 20 more. So now I'm going to go to 66. You can repeat this process over and over again until you get five or six points. You can see I have four right now. I'll let you do those others on your own. The next thing we're going to do is we need to go back and mark the location of this balloon. So to do that, I'm going to go back in time. You'll see my data points erase. It's still recorded, though. In fact, in the background, you can see some blue data points on the graph. And I'm going to go back to my first frame, which was 206. And once there, now I need to mark the location of this balloon. So I'm going to go to this button, 
and on this button it's called the set active point I'm going to click on that add point series and then I'm going to mark the location of the first balloon so I'll go to this and I'll mark I can mark the middle I can mark the front as long as I'm consistent it doesn't matter so I'll mark that and then I'm going to fast forward again to frame 226 just like last time You'll notice that the blue one appeared at the same time I'm going to add this one and I go forward again for another 20 frames to 46. Again watch the blue one appear and I add the red one onto it. And we'll do one more just so you get the idea. And there's the, my fourth point. Again you're going to do this for a total of six points all together. And then you'll have some data in the background here that you're going to use. Now once you have all your data, and again you're going to have six, I only have four marked here. If I go back to uh, my graph in the background, you can see some data points here. And I'll bunch of this stuff I don't need. So I can delete a lot of these columns. The only data points I need are X and X2. So I can get rid of this. And I can get rid of this and this. Y2, all I need is X2 and X. And just so we're clear on what that is, X is what we're going to call D. That's the distance that the hanging balloon has moved. X2 is the distance from the uh, held balloon to the origin. And what you need to do now is take this data, the X data, copy and paste that, all six points, to Excel. And you're going to hand calculate the difference between X and X2. That is the distance between the two balloons. And from there you're going to make a graph and analyze it as you normally would.